Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Mount Olive. Happy New Year to you, to all I haven't spoken to. What have you? Are you glad to be in the Lord's house on the Lord's Day? A new year full of new mercy and grace. Amen. Nobody but God. Nobody but God. I'm excited about being here and what God is going to do this year uh, in your life. Amen. You got to claim that. You got to expect that. God is going to do a miraculous thing in your life. Amen. He's been doing it, hasn't he? Amen. You're here this morning, right? Amen. By the grace of God, by the grace of God, we are here. There are many we know that are not here uh, for whatever reason, and there are those uh, who are not here. Uh, they're going on to be with the Lord, but, but you are here this morning. And so we're thankful and we're grateful for that, that God allowed all of our golden moments to roll on a little while longer. Amen. To God be the glory. I'm going to ask Minister Washington to come up and uh, give us a prayer. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Let us go to God in prayer. Oh, good and gracious God. Here it is again, another year, Father God. You allow your people, Father God, to enter into, Father God. Father God, we just come just to say thank you, God. God, we just want to say thank you, Father God. Lord God, we know that you have something good in store for us, Father God. Father God, we just got to wait on you, God. Lord God, we thank you that you brought us from last year, Father God, January, all the way up until this year, January, Father God. And Lord God, we didn't deserve it, oh God. But Father God, for your grace and your mercy... Oh, God, it kept us, oh, God. Lord God, you kept us from all unseen hurt, harm, and danger, Father God. And, Lord God, we just want to say thank you, Father God. Thank you, God, that you allowed us to enter in, Father God, to get it right, Father God. Lord, you gave us another chance, another opportunity, Father God, just to get it right, Father God. Lord God, we haven't did all the things that you asked us to do, oh, God. Lord God, we haven't said all the things that you asked us to say, Father God. But Lord God, you gave us the breath this morning just to say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord God, we worthy. You are worthy, Father God. Lord God, we don't take anything for granted, Father God. Lord God, well, we had 10,000 tongues on today, oh God. Lord God, it just couldn't be enough to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, oh God. Lord God, someone didn't wake up on this morning, oh God. But Lord God, you allowed our golden moments to roll on just a little while longer, oh God. And Lord, I just want to say thank you, Lord God. I didn't deserve it, Father God. But Lord God, you saw fit, Father God, to give me another chance to get it right, oh God. And Lord God, for that, I just want to say thank you. Lord God, let us go into this year with high expectations of you, God. Lord, let, let us go into this year, Father God, doing the things that require of us to do, oh God. Lord God, let us move the way you want us to move, oh God. Lord God, let us say the things that you want us to say, oh God. And Lord God, we ask in the name of Jesus, oh God, that you just lead us and guide us each and every day of our lives, oh God. Oh, Lord God, if we seem to get off the wrong path, folks, God. Lord God, steer us back in, oh God. 
Lord God, so we'll be ever, oh God, to give you all the praise, oh God, all the glory, God, and all the honor, oh God. Lord, now we ask you now, forgive us now of our sins, Father God. Cleanse us, dear God, from all unrighteousness, this God. Create in us, Heavenly Father, a clean heart. Renew a right, steadfast spirit within us, oh God. Lord God, we love you on today. We praise you on today. We glorify you on today. And we magnify your holy name. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we do pray. And the church said, amen, amen, and amen.
give him praise for that. It was God's grace. Nothing that you and I have done, but it was all because of his grace and his mercy. I'm excited about that. See, you didn't have anything to do with it. You didn't have anything to do with it, but because of his grace and his mercy. God allowed us to be here today, 2022. Amen. Another year. New grace. New mercy. New love. Come on, somebody. God made a way out of no way. God fixed it so that you and I are here today. We're here today. Amen. We're able to testify and to be a testament unto a dying world, unto the unchurched, unto the unsaved that God is alive and well and he's able to save from the uttermost to the guttermost. God is able. How many know God is able? God, whatever you need him to do, he, he, he's more than able. Oh, all because of his grace and his mercy. Thank you, choir. Thank you for that. I know it was God's grace and his mercy because when you look at, when you look at the TV and you read the newspaper and what have you, you see all of the devastation and you see all of the senseless killing and what's going on in our world. You know, it, it's, it's next door now. It's not far away. It's next door. It's in our neighborhood. Amen. But you're here today by God's grace and his mercy. Amen. Give God some praise for that. Consequently, when we think about that, we ought to get excited about that. Because there was nobody but God. Amen. Thank you so much. What a way to start off worship. Amen. It was God's grace. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Washington, for that fervor of prayer. Amen. It's good to see uh, our minister, Minister Neal. Good to see you in the house. Good to have you in the house. Amen. Amen. Uh, Miss Smith, Miss Smith, if I'm correct. Miss Smith, good to see you. Amen. Amen. All of you who uh, I have not seen, I didn't see you last year, but I see you this year. Amen. To God be the glory. Let me say again, thank you. Thank you so much, Mount Olive, for all of your prayers. Thank you for your prayers and your concern for the pastor and his wife and the pastor's mom. Uh, you know, I can't say that enough. You know, she sends her love again. Amen. She sends her love to you, to you all. She considers herself a part of us. Amen. And she says she loves you. And she say, like I say, that you can do about it. Amen. Uh, Minister Byron Weeks, he sends his love this morning, him and his wife. They wanted to be here, but they're not feeling well this morning. And he texted me this morning in Sunday school, said he wanted to be here, but because they, you know, have a little cold going on and what have you. And so he's not feeling the best. And so he sends his love as well. Amen. Amen to God. G give yourself a hand. Give yourself a hand. Yeah, give yourself a hand. Amen. All right. We're ready for our announcement. Okay, come on. Good morning to all Mount Olive members and our virtual families near and far. The way is done here. The gospel will be preached. The sick will be prayed for. And the virtual invitation to Christ will be extended to you. These are our weekly announcements. Volunteers are needed for the citywide MLK cleanup here in our city, Smith Station. When? Saturday, January the 15th at 9 a.m. to 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. To register, call 334-297-8771, extension 6. Cleanup surprise and lunch will be provided. Let's do our part. Continue to pray for our schools. Pray for the educators, the students, the faculty. Pray for everyone as they return the second semester in January. The pandemic is still here. And one of our educators, Sister Shalonika Upshaw, is requesting our help. Ms. Upshaw, she's a teacher at West 
View Elementary School in Phoenix City. She's asking us to support her classroom project on Donor Choose. The school essentials needed are masks, water, snacks, personal hygiene items to help them focus more on classroom instructions. If you have any questions how you can donate, you can see me at the church, or you can contact Sister Upshaw. Thank you. While we give in, there's still three ways you can donate to give to the church. Excuse me. You can give online with the Givelify app. You can mail it in to our post office box, which is 2720 Panther Parkway, P.O. Box 728, Smith Station, Alabama, 36877. Or you can just even drop it off at the church. Blessings on your birthday and anniversary for the month of January. We have one special couple here. They are celebrating 50 plus years anniversary. If you see them, give them love today. Sister Fanny and brother William Lamar. Happy 50 plus anniversary. Please remember to keep our sick and shut ins and members requested intercessory prayer lifted. This concludes our morning announcement. Amen. Let us bow announcements and uh, keep them in mind. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the virus, and we know that you've been watching the TV like I have. We know that it's, it's spreading. Um, there's no secret to that. We see that, and we know that a lot of cases, uh, which they are not even talking about, but we know that there's a lot of cases of the new virus and plus I guess the old one as well is probably the same what have you and saying that I want you to you know keep yourself safe as much as possible you know do all you can for yourself so that you can help others be safe as well uh, and in saying that uh, if you have not taken advantage of the um, the vaccine please do so uh, I'm begging you Amen. Uh, the booster shot, uh, they seem to think is, is helping more so along with the other vaccines. So take advantage of the booster shot as well. Amen. Because we know that this virus, I believe this virus is here for a long time. I think it's going to stick around for a long time. And so to help you, to help yourself, uh, take advantage of that. Uh, will we ever be uh, the same as it relates to how we attend church? I don't know. It's, it's up in the air. You know, but whichever way it goes, we have to learn how to adapt and adjust to the ways and to the things that's happening around us. Uh, we just have to learn how to do that. Uh, and, and saying that, we, we still keep God first, yes, and foremost. But uh, the way we do things may be a little different. Everything may, may not be on the same day as, as it were on last year. Things change. And so we just have to learn how to adapt that. And not only adapt, but accept it, you know, for things, for what they are. You know what I'm saying? But I don't want you to change as in your relationship with God. You know, keep God First and foremost, keep him in your heart. You know, love your fellow man, you know. Try to do, I know we make New Year resolutions and, you know, what have you and promises. 
don't even do that. Just, just make a change, you know, because you, you, you put together these resolutions and what you want to do and stuff, and then you, you ain't got nowhere near them. You know what I'm saying? You really sometimes we just lying to ourselves. So just, just make it up in your mind that you're going to change. Lord, help me. You can't do it without the help of the Lord. Lord, help me to be better this year. Help. We talked about that some in Sunday school. Help me. Uh, I'm in your will, Lord. Help me to love better. Help me to be a better pastor, a leader. Help me to be a better servant, uh, a giver. You know what I'm saying? Help me to be a better testament to God's people. Help me to help mankind and humanity as a whole to be better as it relates to being a child of God. That's what it's all about. That's what, it's, that's, that's what the church is all about. It's not about just, you know, just coming to church and you singing your song and you saying this and you saying that. But it's about the content that's what you get from the pulpit and the Sunday school and the Bible study. And you take it out beyond these walls. And you help humanity. You know what I'm saying? You help people to be better. Help people to get saved. You can't save them. But what you give them, when you give them Jesus, Jesus is the one who said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw them in. But if you give them Jesus, see. But you got to be the one to present it to them. That's what we are. We just presenters of Christ. We are ambassadors of Christ. That's what it's all about. It's not about what you got on, what I got on, what they do. No. It's about the word of God. Taking it out into the highways and byways to better equip men and women, boys and girls. See? Because I, I just believe we're living in the last days. I just believe. And God is soon to return. And I know you've been hearing that for years and years and years and years. But you know what? One day he is coming. He's coming back. And I'm wondering, will he find faith when he comes? See, the only thing that's going to matter one day after all we've done, all of the singing, all of the giving, all of the playing, all of the singing, what have you, the going here or there, the only thing that's going to matter one day is whether or not your soul have been saved. That's the only thing that's going to matter. When the hymn books and Bibles have been closed up and our Lord and Savior crack the sky. It won't matter about your money or your bank account or your clothes and your pocketbooks and all that, your hairdo. That won't matter. Won't matter about your color. Black, white, Mexican, Hispanic. Won't matter about that. Only thing that's going to matter one day, children of God, is whether or not your soul have been saved. Wow. When it all comes to a close, Give God some praise. Can we do that? Hallelujah. The uh, uh, Bible study will resume this Wednesday at 6 o'clock. And uh, we'll have it. It'll be in-house for those that want to come and take advantage of it. We'll be here. And plus, it'll be online as well. We'll keep it online because we know there are those who will not be able to come or will not come or whatever, whatever whatever reason that's okay but it'll be here uh, for you and I'll be here amen if you'd like to come 6 o'clock amen you can come amen and so for this month as I said on last week we'll keep it we'll keep it the three Sundays this month we're going to watch it from month to month but by looking at it and by observing on what I see and hear we may be like this for a while Amen? Amen. To God be the glory. I want to thank Sister Murphy for what, what took place when she, when she gave to our elders and our seniors. Thank you for that. Amen. I told her uh, one day, if the Lord say the same, I'll, I'll be in that category. Amen. <laughs> I, I just thank God for where I am now. Amen. You know what I've learned as time go along? Just take one day at a time. To take one day at a time. Amen. 
and you know live life to the fullest yes but also keep God in the fullness of it keep him in the center of it because none of us knows if you've been looking at like the Facebook those who look at Facebook and the news and what have you all of the senseless killing that's going on you know it's just Yes, it's sad and it's sickening, you know, to see us as a people taking each other's lives, you know, for nothing, you know. Wow. But nevertheless, our God is worthy to be praised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, y'all ready? Okay, we got another song coming from the choir. Come on. I could have been dead and gone, but Lord, you let me live on. Now I am, I'm a living testimony.
But I realized it could have been me And I know that I'm not worthy But you keep on keeping me I want to thank you, Lord Yes, I thank you, I'm still alive before me but I'm still alive I'm still here by the grace of God I heard what you said many in your family is going on but look at you and I we're still here by the grace of God I'm still here I'm still here, I'm still here. You're still here by the grace of God. Isn't anybody here know what I'm talking about? If it had not been for 
by the Lord for him on your side where will you be I don't know about you but I don't mind I think I just stop and give him praise hallelujah hallelujah thank you Jesus made a way out of no way January 21 all the way to January 22 can't nobody do me like Jesus can't nobody do me like Jesus can't nobody hold me like Jesus Woo! yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Good God Almighty. If I had 10,000 tongues, it wouldn't be enough. I just used the one I got. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Uh, yeah. Lord have mercy. Y'all better give him praise. I know one day the Bible declared, one day, every knee got to bow, every tongue must confess. That's even to the ones that don't want to do it. They're going to have to do it one day. But because I want to do it, I just give him praise now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Woo, Lord have mercy. Good God Almighty. I feel the fire burning. I feel the fire burning. You know what? I feel the prayer wheel turning. Lord have mercy. Ooh. Ooh. Good God Almighty. Good God Almighty. Don't let the devil hold you down. Don't let him hold you down. You better give him the praise while you can. Because either one of us, we could go out this door today. And God can take us just like that. He can do it now if, if he desires. I just praise him while I can. Yeah. Isn't he worthy? I know you. we ain't had time for you to give testimonies like you want to give testimonies. But you can praise him right now. You can testify right now. If it had not been for the Lord, him on our side, where would we be? Where would we be? Yeah, yeah. Could have been dead, sleeping in my grave. You, let me say that again. Could have been dead, sleeping in my grave. Oh, Jesus made, oh, death behave. Yeah, oh. Ooh, Lord have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. And I don't know about you, but I can feel his presence. God Almighty, I can feel his presence. God is in this place. God is in this place. He's in this place. He's in this place. You better give him praise. Our number could be called this year.
Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Hallelujah. Praise him. Praise him. Isn't he good? Isn't he worthy? Look what God has done. Brought you over into another year. So many have gone on. Tell him you love him. I love you, Lord. Tell him you love him. Thank you, Lord. He's been good. He's been good. More than good. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Because if you're ashamed of him before men, he's going to be ashamed of you before his father. Yeah. Come on. Give him praise. That's it. The highest praise. Be so worthy, y'all. Lord, we love you. 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 Really, really love you. Yeah. Lord, we love you. I love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, God has been good to us, y'all. You. you think about it. Lord, we pray. Through all of the tornadoes and all of the shootings, Lord, we you think about it. God kept you. God kept you. Kept you in your right mind. Kept you safe. Kept you and your family safe. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, I thank you. Lord, we thank you. Don't be ashamed of it. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's the highest praise you can give him. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. Lord, you're worthy. When you read Lord, the obituary column, think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Lord, you're think about it. Jesus, 
Can't nobody save me like Jesus. Can't nobody hold me like Jesus. Can't nobody love me like Jesus, I tell you. Oh, he's worthy to be praised. I'll tell the world over how good he's been. I'll tell the world over how good it is to me. Yeah, you've been good to me, Jesus. And I want to take this time to tell you. I want to take the time to tell you, Jesus. Oh, you've been so good. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Oh, you've been so good to me. And I want to praise you, Jesus. I want to tell the world. Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless the name. I will bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh God am I. God has spoken. Let the church say amen. 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 For a few moments. For a few moments. Exodus, Exodus, Exodus. Book of Exodus. Old Testament, Exodus 14. For a few moments. Exodus 14, beginning with verse 10. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord, and they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness Moses the God man said and Moses said unto the people fear ye not stand still and see the salvation of the Lord which he shall show you to you today for the Egyptians whom you have seen today ye shall see them again no more forever the Lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to talk, use for a subject. He didn't bring us this far to leave us. God did not bring us this far to leave us. And you can be uh, 
personal with it, if you like. He didn't bring me this far to lead me. Unlike the children of Israel in the text, uh, God had been good to them. God had made ways out of no way. They cried for hundreds of years, Lord, send us a deliverer. We're tired of trying to make bricks without straw. It's hard down here. Lord, we are about to die. Lord, do you not care for us? Do you not care? Do you not see us, O oh Lord? We're your children. Time came along, whereas God heard their cry. <laughs> and he sent Moses to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. After which the deliverance took place, guess what happened? They complained. They murmured and they complained about what God had done and what he is doing. And if you read the text, you'll see that they had rather go back. And that's the way it is today. There are those who would rather go back than to go forward. But I don't know about you. If God delivered them back then, he's able to deliver us now. And not only that, after the deliverance took place, God took care of them. God knew their needs and he knew their wants. God took care of them by day and by night. But there again, to add insult to injury, they continued to complain. Like us today, we complain. I don't care how good we have it. I don't care what we drive. We may have the best of things, but it's like it's never enough. We're always finding ourselves complaining about this, that, and the other. But I'm here to tell you, if you were to search the neighborhood, look around your corner on your block, there's somebody who's doing much worse than what you are. They don't have what you have. Have I got a witness here? They complained. They mumbled. And they complained and they mumbled. It was never enough. God had delivered them from the bondage, from trying to make bricks without straw. But then again, it always take the God man. Moses, after which they arrived to the Red Sea. Egyptians behind them. Pharaoh behind them. But God had a way out of no way. God made a way out of no way. You know the story how he opened the Red Sea. Pharaoh's army behind them, behind them and water in front of them. But look at God. God told Moses, I hear their cry. I'm going to deliver them even though they don't deserve my love. They don't deserve my mercy like the Sunday school lesson. But I love them so. I cannot turn my back on them. I want them to know I did not bring them this far just to leave them. If I brought them to it, surely I can take them through it. Have I got a witness here? It's the same way today. Yes, look at what we're having to face in our world. Yes, it's hardening. It's sickening. Yes, we are in despair and we're discouraged. But I come to tell you, children of God, God did not bring us this far just to leave us, not to drop us, not to fail us. And I'm telling you here today, I declare and decree that we're going to make it with the help of the Lord. As God is my witness, I just believe. And see, so you, you got to believe. See, I believe that God is going to see us through this. Even though I know it looked dull and it looks dismal, but God is going to see us through this. You just got to keep your faith. Keep your faith in him because why? God did not give us the spirit of fear. Huh? Come on, give me that scripture. Y'all got that scripture? Uh-huh. I want to put it on the screen so you can see it. That's it. You got it? Second Timothy. You got Second Timothy? They may not believe me. I want you to put it up there. There it is. I didn't make it up. For God had not given it. There it is have not given us the spirit of fear, but of what? Power, and of love, and of a sound mind. See, 
I discovered that Satan wants to plant the seed of fear in all of us. See, that's what Satan need. he needs. He needs you to have fear in order for him to operate in your life and to do the things in your, in, 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 in your life for you to be fearful. See, but we operate by what? Faith. God needs faith from us as children of God that he may do the things that he wants to do in our life. So don't be focused on fear. Don't be focused on what's going on around us. Yes, it's here. We know God gave us common sense. We know what to do. We know how to do. He's going to help us to maneuver through it. That's that wisdom and that knowledge. That's where that comes from. See, it's not about you hitting the number and all that stuff. He gives you the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding. Whereas when you come to the crossroads of life, you're able to make the right decisions in life. See? Give you that sound mind and that power. But see, what we got to do, we got to operate in faith. Even though I cannot see it, I just believe God, he's going to work it out. See? Even if I can't see it. Why? Because we walk by faith and not by sight as children of God. That's what we do. We operate in faith, even though I cannot see it. But I can pull it out of the unforeseen realm and put it into the natural. And then God began to do the supernatural. How many of you know he can do the supernatural in your life? You just got to believe that he can do it. I know he can. See, but what Satan does, he's plant that seed of fear. Oh, COVID-19. Omicron, all these viruses, what, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? God always gives us a way out. It's up to you to take the way out. A lot of people said, you know, when, when the virus came out and the vaccine, no, I'm not taking that vaccine. A lot of us said it when it first came. I'm not taking that vaccine. I don't know what's in it. They don't know enough about it. And then when God speed up the process for them to get it and put it out to the public, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to. You got to believe in the supernatural. What should have taken five or six years for them to get it right, God sped it up and they got it right within a year. See? Just like the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt, that should have took what, six, seven-day trip? Took how long? Forty-some odd years. See? Because of their unbelief. They didn't believe. They complained and they mumbled. See? The same way. But God is able to fix it. God has already fixed it. We just got to walk in our destiny. And we got to walk in the will of God. We got to constantly meditate and pray, God, show me the way. He didn't bring us this far to leave us. See? They got to the promised land. What did they do? They still complained. I don't care how good God had been to them, they still complained. But God said, how many times must I prove to them what is it going to take? I promise never to leave them nor forsake them. My people, even the one who don't deserve it. I love them, but I don't condone the sin. But I love them. What is it going to take for them to put their total trust in me? See, He didn't bring us this far to leave us, children. I suggest to you today to walk on by faith. Walk on by faith. Because this time, tomorrow, whatever it is going on in your life, you won't see it again. That's what he told the, the, the Egyptians. By this time tomorrow, you won't see them no more. I just believe that. I don't know how God is going to do it. 
And I don't even have to try to speculate in how he's going to do it, but I know he's going to do it. It's not for me and you to try to figure God out. See, that's where we get in trouble. We try to figure God out. Well, I wonder, how is he going to? It doesn't matter how he's going to do it. Sometimes God does things that, that looks foolish to us. Hmm? Sometimes when you pray for the rain, you know it, you got to prepare for the mud. You know, something looks foolish. Why would God do that? Why did God allow the tornado to come through the cities? God is God. He, he do what he want to do. See, I thank God. I pray for those people that have been impacted. God give those people. He, he, he's able to sustain them. He's able to restore and put back that which has been lost physically and spiritually, emotionally, whatever it is. He's able to do that. He's God. He can do that. So don't worry yourself about, Lord, I don't know what's going to happen, what's going to become of us this year. You know, take one day at a time. I'm not worried about the next month or what, what have you. Take one day at a time. Sweet Jesus, help me to know that to take one day at a time. You know what I'm saying? Take no thought for what you shall eat or wear. Didn't he tell the disciples that? They were worried about positions and money and power and what have you. But what he told them, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness and everything else is going to be added to you. You know what I'm saying? That's what it's all about. He didn't bring us this far to leave us. If he delivered the children of Israel with their complaining sales, he's able to deliver us. Have I got a witness here? What I want us to do this year is evaluate ourselves. Don't, don't point the finger. Just evaluate yourself. See where you measure up. On God's scale. See what I'm saying? See where you measure up. You know? Help yourself. Because if you're going to be a better servant, a better anything, first of all, you got to help yourself first. See? And then we'll spread out and help others. But see where you measure up. See where you stand with the Lord. Lord, help me to be a better servant. Help me to be a better parent, a better father, grandfather. Help me to be a better uncle. Help you to be a better wife. Help me to be more faithful to you, Lord. Just help me to do that because, Lord, if you don't help me, I can't do it. And I dare not try to do it without you, without your guidance, without your strength, without your righteousness, without your power. Without your mighty hand leading me and guiding me. I can't do it. Because I'm frail. I'm weak. I'm a man of unclean lips. I say talk wrong, do wrong, think wrong at times. See? So Lord, here I am. Make me over again. God Almighty. And God will do that. Lord, give me a clean sheet. It's a new year, so Lord, I've soiled the old sheep. I got grease on the old sheep. I got stain. I stained the other sheep. But Lord, give me a new lease on life. Give me a new sheet. Just start over again, Lord. David had enough sense to even say that, Lord, create in me a clean heart. David knew he had messed up. So he said, Lord, just start over. Take this old stuff. Let me start over with you, Lord. That's what you got to do. And when you go to God and approach God in that manner, God is able to do something with you. But if you go to God in pridefulness and arrogance, you know, and you stuck on yourself, see, just like Cain, God gave him a chance to get it right. All he had to do was just say, Lord, I repent. I'm sorry. I made a mistake. 
but he was stuck on himself. So the Lord allowed him to be a vagabond, just wandering. You know. He even got smart with God. Say, what have you done? Am I my brother's keeper? You know? No. That ain't the way to approach God. I humble myself before the Lord. Lord, it's me standing in the need of prayer. There's always room for improvement. All of our houses need working on sooner or later, don't they? You can get a brand new house today. Time will come along the way. You got to do something to it. You got to fix on it. You got to repair. Something going to go wrong on it. The floor start cracking. You hear wind in the window. That old song, there's a leak in this old building. And my soul got to move. Oh, my soul got to move. My soul, there's a leak in this old building, and my soul, to a bit, not me. Yeah. Okay, okay. Get you <laughs> oh, but look. He didn't bring us this far to leave us. The door of the church is open. Will there be one today who can come by and let a Christian experience water baptism? If you want to be a part of this ministry, as the Lord leads you, we would love to have you. Come on and help us to evangelize this world. Tell them about the goodness of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? We offer Christ. You can have a new lease on life. Come on. Come on. Yeah. We offer Christ to you. That's what we offer to you today. Oh, my brother. That's what you got to tell men, women, boys, and girls. We offer you Christ offer Christ to you. Oh, my sister. You got to be like a little child. He'll give you bread. He will give life. you bread. Life abundantly. Life abundantly. Come. So come. You got to come to him as a little child. Come. Listen, Lord, here I am. Show me the way. Unto Christ. Come on, come on, come on, come on. We offer her. We offer Christ.
Christ, yeah. Unto Christ. Come on to Christ. He's waiting on you. He's waiting on you. He's waiting on you. Unto Christ. He's waiting on you, yeah. Yeah, oh. Come on to Christ. Come on to Christ. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father except by me. Wow. Yeah. Come on, give God some praise. Lord, have mercy. I thank God for who he is. What is it in you? Is he Lord of Lord? Is he King of King? Is he Prince of Peace? Everlasting Father, Almighty God, everywhere, all knowing God, all powerful God. He didn't bring us this far to leave us. I, I hope my prayer is that you have been inspired today. What is that? They, they telling me something. I'm trying to figure out. Put it in a uh, jump drive. Oh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. The Lord's Supper. <laughs> thank you. I got caught up, y'all. As you prepare your hearts and your mind, he, he's okay. He's okay. Prepare your hearts and your mind. If you have not been served, just raise your hand. Think about you and your life. You just think about you and your life. This is an intimate part of worship, whereas we partake of Christ on the inside of us. It all points back to him and what he did for you and me. Let us pray, Father, we come now. And we thank you for this time that we're spending together. Realize, O oh Lord, that this is an intimate part of worship. To whereas we can partake of you on the inside of ourselves. And Lord, give reverence and honor to you, O oh God, for what you did out on Calvary recognize the atoning work that was done for our behalf. Lord, we come now collectively repenting of our sins. Oh God, realizing that we have sinned and come short, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But God, we are sorry. Have mercy on us, Lord creating us a clean heart. Lord, could be by sin of omission, by sin of commission, or by way of unbelief. Have mercy, Lord. Thank you for being faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and then cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We praise you on today and we thank you 
allowed us to be turned from a carnal use to a spiritual use. And we'll give you the glory for it. It's in Jesus' name we pray, Father. Amen. Take the bread, this is the body. For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take and eat, for this is my body, which is broken for you and me. See, that's what it said. This do in remembrance of me, the Lord said. And they did eat. Cup. New Testament, blood of the church, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. After the same manner, also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is a New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. They did drink. For as often you eat this bread and drink of this cup, what do you do? You do show the Lord's death till he come. And he's coming back again. Keep the faith. Walk on by faith. Amen. Give God some praise as you stand to your feet. Yes, Lord. Friend, hope that you have been encouraged and inspired today. That as you go throughout this day, that you continue to keep God as your center focus. Keep giving him praise. and Keep giving him glory. Amen. This is a new year. New mercy, new grace. Now, it need to be a new you and a new me. And whatever area of your life you need God to operate in. You need him to show himself more. And whatever area it is, he will do it. But you got to trust him to do it now. He, he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. You know, you just do what you do. Do your part and God will do his part. Amen. I love you and ain't nothing you can do about it. Amen. Ain't nothing you can do about it. Let us pray. Father, we come now to the end of this worship. And we thank you now for this time we have spent together. Thank you, O oh God, for your unending love. Thank you for salvation. Thank you, O oh God, for Zion songs. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. O oh God, we give you praise, the honor, and the glory. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide. Be with you all henceforth and forever. Let us all say amen. Amen and amen. All right. Go in peace. I love you in the Lord.